Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to bridge reinforcement learning with uh, simulation software. And of course, you might, might ask, aren't all reinforcement learning experiments uh, based on simulations? And you would be right, kind of. But the point is that there is established enterprise simulation software that you might be unaware of, uh, which can be leveraged for really cool reinforcement learning projects. Okay. All right, um, before we dive into any specific software, Let's talk about a real world example first. So let's say you have a car company with a large factory grid and your cars have to go through several production steps. If you have a lot of cars produced in a factory, you will have the following question. How do I move cars efficiently from A to B? Okay. As your factory gets more crowded, this might begin to resemble a very complicated 15 puzzle of sorts, right? One of the huge differences is though, that the rules of the game are more complicated and require, we require coordination between the different parts produced. Also, we're not in a static environment and new cars might come in at any minute. I won't bother you here with all the rules of this game, uh, just take it that it's a somewhat intricate problem statement, okay? So to give you an example, in the picture on the right, how does the car in red on point uh, 19 marked with a C, get to its next production step at point 4B. So the cars can't really move uh, freely, but they, they have to go along uh, the production line here, uh, the orange lines on the grid. And also they, they can't pass each other and other objects, right? So what you also see here on, on the grid is uh, tables denoted in green. So the tables can bear cars and bring them to production steps. So tables have cars or not, right? Um, but so tables and cars can't pass each other, yeah? In particular, if you ha have a lot of cars, you might, might face conflicting goals, right? So uh, one car goes in one direction, the other one wants to go in the other direction. So how do, it, how do they pass each other? So the cars need to find smart ways not to block, block each other's path, paths. In this example, the table at point 1C first has to at least move to 15B to clear the path, so that the car at point 19 can reach its target, right? So I give you the, the optimal solution in this case, right? So the table at point 1C has to go to 1B, 1A, 16B, 16A, 15B, um, to, to clear the path for uh, the car at point 19, which can then go to 1C, 1B, 1A, 16B, 16A, 17A, 17B, 3B, 3A, 4A, 4B, right? So this is the optimal solution. And um, I am hope you're convinced that uh, as, as, as you increase the number of tables and, and cars on, on the factory grid and complicate the situation, it becomes very difficult to, to solve this kind of problem uh, in general, right? So, so you have to figure out what, what to do. And so we see, we, we learn about more um, uh, about what the solution could look like, right? So I'm, I'm going to talk about this next. But before, before we do that, uh, let's, take, uh, let's take a step back. The problem is, can, can we solve this, this factory puzzle and uh, what exactly can we work with, right? That's the question we first have to ask. Keep in mind that this is based on actual customer needs. So while it would be nice maybe to start completely from scratch, we really can't. The customer already has a simulation model, in this case built with a tool called AnyLogic that we should integrate with. And this is the standard scenario for companies of that size. Of course, there are many other simulation software tools like maybe Simio or Simulink, but we're going to focus on any logic here for a bit, right? So the car company from the previous slide was already modeled with any logic, uh, which is a good thing since uh, um, any logic is a very rich and powerful tool that comes with a lot of convenience, right? Once you're used to it. Apart from modeling discrete events and all that comes with it, it allows you to visualize and inspect your simulations quite easily, right? From a reinforcement learning perspective, you can view any logic as a way to build uh, fairly complex environments, but with the drawback that you can't, you don't have really any direct access to the tools you want to use in reinforcement learning uh, land. So it's a bit like reinforcement learning environments minus all the <laughs> RL methods, if you will. Any logic and its cloud version uh, speak uh, natively Java. So it's unclear how you would uh, run an experiment on a given simulation using your favorite reinforcement learning tool in Python. So what exactly can we do here? All right. Um, 
if we turn it around and start with the toolbox you want to use, namely the Python ecosystem, maybe RLib, OpenAI baselines, or Keras RL, how do you connect that to your simulation implementation? If we had to build things from scratch, there's a limited number of uh, discrete event simulation libraries in, in Python, uh, mainly SymPy and Sullivan, right? But they're mostly very basic and like all the uh, bells and whistles that you would like to have. There is potential, but it's not the same as established simulation software. Also, on a side note, if you, if you do manage to connect simulation software to your uh, reinforcement learning tools, you suddenly have access to a lot of interesting problems that go beyond the usual open AI gym environments that you're sometimes lucky enough to find on the internet, right? Um, so having said all that, how would you connect both worlds? And one of the answers is use PathMind. And I'm going to show you what you can do with it in, in, in one example. So first, if you have an existing model like the factory model we talked about, you can in, uh, install an AnyLogic plugin called PathMind Helper that exposes a simple interface that will look familiar to reinforcement learning practitioners. Essentially, you have to provide functions for observations, rewards, and your done condition, but it's built in a way that simulation models uh, can understand quickly. Right? Next, you export your model as a standalone application and upload it to the PathMind web application. This is where PathMind connects your model to an actual reinforcement learning environment, which, as I pointed out earlier, isn't easy to do. It's, it's fairly technically involved, right? You can then run as many experiments as you would like in PathMind in the web application. And I will talk about some of the features in, in more detail at, at a later point. But once you're happy with your results, you can then export the policy and plug it back into your simulation to see how it performs for instance, as opposed to a heuristic that you, you're trying to beat, right? Okay, so back to the factory problem. How, how can you solve this now? What we did was to create a tuple, a tuple of actions, one action for each table, regardless if that table has a car on it or not. Each car can move in the four basic directions or simply stand still. So there are five actions in total per car. Right. Uh, on top of that, we use uh, one, one hot vectors to encode the current position of the, of the tables and their next production target. So if a car goes through the next production step, it gets assigned a, a, a positive reward. If it takes longer to get there, we discount that reward accordingly uh, over time. Right. On the algorithmic side, we use uh, proximal policy optimization for training with a population-based training scheduler. And this, this, of course, all happens within the uh, Ray ecosystem with RLib and uh, Tune. So let's have a look at a factory that has to produce six cars in total, right? We, we could go up in cars, but uh, it's more difficult to see what's going on if I show you uh, results with more tables. Um, all right, okay, let's, let's uh, start the video. Pause it quickly. So what you see here is there's, there's a car on 3A that has to go essentially up and left to, to, to produce uh, its car, right? And the, the car that sits on point, uh, point 18 needs to go to 4A. So it first has to wait for the, the car on 3A to, to pass before it can go down. And then what you will see afterwards, um, <laughs> I'm going to show you, uh, tell you before so you know what to look at. Um, after, after the, uh, the car at point 18 has delivered its, 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 uh, its, its car on uh, to, to point 4A, it will go back and move out of the way so that the last car can be produced. Okay, so let's have a look. So the guy at 3A goes to 3B, 17B, and now the, the car at point 18 can start to go down to 4A. So and once it's there, it starts to go do, to move back and tuck into point 18. And now you see the, the car at 15B can now move because its, it's, uh, way, it's, its path is uh, free. So it goes to the right to 17B, 3B, 3A, and then 4A, which is the uh, final destination. Um, yeah. So this, this is quite interesting because um, 
you see like there's, 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 there's at least, um, well, the part that we looked at, uh, we had kind of uh, three uh, coordinated uh, cars being delivered, right? So the first one had to move out of the way so that the second one could be delivered. And then the, the second one had to move out of the way so, the, so that the third one could be delivered. And in this kind of kind of smart uh, uh, behavior that emerges from from the result of a reinforcement learning agent um, is quite difficult to to uh, incorporate or encode into into uh, any heuristic. I mean, you you might you might try and also uh, dabble with uh, with other algorithms, but it's it's still fairly difficult to to pull something like that off. And so it's it's quite an encouraging to see such solutions and uh, such uh, smart emerging behavior in in such uh, scenarios, right? So this this works quite well. All right. So uh, now that we've seen an example, let's take a step back. All right. So first of all, I want to stress that uh, this is just an example, and you can tackle many other scenarios with PathMind, like let's say job scheduling or cost minimization problems. The car factory is really just an easy to follow use case that I wanted to introduce you to. I also want to point out uh, a few key features that uh, help you along the way with your experiments. So first of all, uh, PathMind tracks all, tracks all your experiments. So you can, for instance, compare, uh, compare them to each other or recall what you did last week and so on, right? It also allows you to experiment with uh, different reward terms without having to go back to your simulation model, right? So there's no re-upload needed. If you look in the, in, the lower, uh, in the lower right, you can craft your reward function inside uh, the web application and then rerun an experiment. So this is quite, quite handy sometimes. Of course, uh, you can also track the progress of your experiments um, by means of um, learning curves and so on, and drill into metrics that, you are, that are most relevant for your use case, right? Another benefit of our solution is that you can uh, run many experiments in parallel to test your hypotheses quicker, right? So if you, if you have, let's say, I don't know, four um, reward functions that you want to test out, but you don't have the, the compute resources locally, uh, you, you can do this with, with the web application and, and scale out training and get results quicker, right? Um, and lastly, I want to mention that we have an upcoming policy serving solution, which is crucial for many of our customers. So after all, simulations give you a digital version of the real process that you model. And ultimately what you want is uh, bring back the solutions you found with reinforcement learning back to the real world, right? So for instance, on the top right, you see the response of a rest endpoint for the uh, six car factory example that we've built, right? And that we've seen in the, in the video on the last slide. So you see, um, the, the um, response of this, of, this, of this endpoint consists of six actions, um, which, which also have uh, you know, human readable meanings attached to them so that uh, you know, human operators could, could interpret them. Um, so and this endpoint is actually used to drive decisions in the actual physical factory. And uh, if you think about it, this is, this is what we want eventually as it derives the most value, of course, right? You, you want to help, help out the factory, not the simulation. All right, uh, thank you for your attention. Um, if, you, if you want to learn more about uh, my work or that of Path9, check out my GitHub or follow me on Twitter, right? In particular, you might, you, you might want to check out my, my latest book on deep learning in the game of Go or follow recent development uh, in the, in the HyperOpt organization. If you want to get your, your hands dirty and run an, an actual example with PathMind, uh, follow the link below. All right, uh, thank you so much.